let's talk about networking. Now, it wasn't that long ago when the concept of networking computers together was something that was done only by very large organizations with a lot of money. Today that has changed. If you work in any business, whether it's large or small, you can just about bet that they have some kind of network implemented. Even home users now, people are starting to network their homes. They can get high-speed internet access through cable, through DSL, and they can share that access with all the computers in their house by implementing a small network. As a PC technician, you need to know the basics of networking. And for your A-plus exam, you also need to know the basics of networking. Now, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a networking guru to pass your A-plus exam. However, you do need to know the basics. We're going to talk about that here. Let's begin by talking about what a network is. A long time ago, before networks were widely deployed, if I was working on this particular workstation, and I had a file that I needed to get to a coworker who was using this workstation. I had really not very many options. One way I could do it was to put a floppy disk in my floppy drive, save the file, walk it over to this system, put it in there, copy it over. That was called sneaker net because we used our sneakers to form a computer network by carrying a floppy disk from one place to another. In addition, back in the old days here, if I needed to print a document, I had to have a printer connected to my workstation. In addition, if my coworker over here needed to print a document, he or she had to have a printer connected to his or her workstation as well. If you think about it, how frequently do you print documents? Maybe once an hour, twice in the morning, twice in the afternoon, maybe even only once a day. During that time, that printer is sitting idle. At the same time, you have another printer over here being used by your coworker, and it's sitting idle as well. That is an inefficient use of resources. In addition, you've got your workstation here. You've got a variety of different applications and data that you need to do your job. So you need to have a big hard drive in your workstation to store all your stuff. Same with your coworker. He or she also has to have a big hard drive to store all the applications, all the data that they need to do their job. Well, there's a great deal of redundancy between the data that's stored on both of these drives. To fix this problem, we use a network. With a network, we install a network interface card inside of our computers, and then we connect them together using some kind of connective media. It could be radio waves, it could be copper wires, it could even be light pulses in a fiber optic cable. In some manner, we connect these two PCs together. Once that's done, I no longer have to take a floppy disk save the data on it, walk it over to my coworker, pop it in, and upload it to their PC. All of a sudden, I can send that data over the network medium to that other computer like that instantly. And that's really nice, especially if the data changes on a frequent basis. In addition, we no longer need to have a dedicated printer for everyone in the company. What a waste of money. Instead, what we do is we attach a printer to the network itself. Then everybody on the network can all send their print jobs to the same printer. We can have one printer that services 20 or 30 people instead of having to purchase 20 or 30 different printers. Doing this, we could also purchase multiple printers with different capacities. Say this one's just a high speed black and white printer, this one's a high quality color printer. If folks every now and then need to print color, copies, you don't want to have to purchase a black and white and a color printer for everybody in your organization. You only need one or two. That way everybody can share them. In addition, we need to eliminate the redundancies of stored data on both systems. So what we do is we implement some kind of shared storage. It could be a server, it could be a network attached storage device, or even some kind of storage array. Either way, we can take and save our data instead of on the local hard drive, we can save all of our information here. That makes it such that no matter what workstation I'm sitting at, I can still get at my information because it's saved in one spot on the network. In addition, it makes things nice for the network administrator because instead of having to be worried about backing up everybody's workstation every night to protect all the company's critical data, I only need to be worried about protecting this data on one machine there. At this point, we've talked about the four different components you need to establish a basic network. 
You need the workstations. You need network interface cards. You need connecting media of some type, as well as shared resources. There's one other critical component that you need to establish a network, and that's called a network protocol. A network protocol is much like the language the different hosts on the network will speak. You know that if you pick up the telephone and you call someone who lives in Russia and try to talk with them, you're going to have problems, right? You have a physical connection to that person in Russia through the telephone line, so the physical connection is established. However, the logical connection isn't there because the person in Russia speaks Russian, you speak English, you can't communicate. Same way with networks. We have different hosts on the network. They're physically connected together with the network medium. However, unless they speak the same language on the network, they can't communicate. There are four main protocols that you need to be somewhat familiar with for your A-plus exam. You don't have to be an expert at these protocols, but you need to understand what they are. The first one, and the one that's most widely used today, is called IP. IP stands for Internet Protocol. Many times you'll see it written as TCP IP. That is sort of correct. It's sort of not in many ways, because there's actually two different types of IP. There's TCP IP and UDP IP. We won't get into the details of what the difference is now. You're better off just sticking with IP because that encompasses both of these different upper layer protocols. IP is the protocol of the internet. When you dial into your ISP and access a web page, you are using IP to connect to that remote web server and pull that web page down and view it in your browser. In addition, IP is used by most major network operating systems in use today. In addition to IP, there's an older protocol called IPX. IPX was the protocol. It was it. It was the king up until about 1993, 1994. IPX was produced by Novell and was very widely deployed using Novell's NetWare servers. However, Novell has pretty much moved away from IPX, although it does still support it. It now has all their network servers running on IP, just like Linux and Windows. When we start moving into the Macintosh world, we have an older Macintosh protocol called Apple Talk. Apple Talk is a protocol that allows Macintosh computers to talk together. For a while, just like IPX, Apple Talk was it. However, just like Novell's NetWare, Apple has now moved to IP to communicate, and that, and that allows Macintosh systems to communicate with more than just other Macintosh systems. It allows it to communicate with Windows systems, with Linux systems, with NetWare systems, and so on. Remember, we're talking about languages. If we have some systems on the network that are speaking Apple Talk and other systems that are speaking IP, they can't communicate with each other. The only way they can is to use the same protocol. The last protocol we need to talk about is NetBIOS. NetBIOS originally came from IBM, but was adopted by Microsoft early on with Windows. The earliest versions of Windows that were network aware used this NetBIOS protocol to communicate with each other. Today, most Windows networks use IP instead. However, there's a little bit of NetBIOS still tucked away that's used on a Windows network. If you've ever used a Windows network and you've gone to My Network Places or My Network Neighborhood and browsed the network and looked at all the Windows hosts that were on the network, you were actually using some functions from NetBIOS to see those. Those are the basics of a network. In order to have a running network, we need several different components. We have to have network hosts. We need to have network interface cards. We need to have a connecting medium. We need to have shared resources and we need to have network protocols.